I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to talk about the power of play. You know, Margaret, relationships are supposed to be fun. Yes. And we tend to forget that a lot yes. of times. Absolutely. Through daily life, being stressed out or we have issues come up. And I think a lot of times it's because of our unmet needs. Right. And it's very difficult to play when you're desperately trying to get your needs met. Your needs met. met, absolutely. But you're supposed to have fun yep. with your partner. And I think many people are able to do that up front in the beginning stages of the relationship mm -hmm. because there's not all this pressure to get my needs met. Right. But once you become exclusive, it's all about, well, now you have to meet all these needs. And until you do that, we yeah. can't really have fun. We can't, and we can't lighten up and have any fun. Yeah. But you want to have fun in relationships. It helps everything. Absolutely. So today, Margaret is going to be talking about the power of play, which I absolutely think is one of my favorite things to do, is be able to banter yep. and laugh and have a good time. And it's a major part of your charm, mm -hmm. too. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about play. Um, and believe it or not, you're going to hear, there is serious research on play, believe it or not. Good. All right. More play. Okay. But I'm doing this because it struck me the other day that I talked to lots of people who are grieving an ex and thinking about what, what kind of partner and what kind of life they would like to have. Mm -hmm. And very rarely do I hear anybody say they want to have a sense of humor, they want their partner to have a sense of humor, and they want to be able to be play, playful together and to play and to have fun. Yep. I think Craig is right, I think, when we're very upset about getting our needs met. But it always helps, no matter what's going on around you. Yep. So anyway, that's how I decided to address this issue. Okay, so I read some articles and I listened to a TED Talk mm -hmm. um, by a Dr. Stuart Brown. He's a psychiatrist and he's old like me. He's a psychiatrist who did a great deal of research on murderers. Mm -hmm. I understand about that. I worked with them. Yes. We have a lot of really fascinating conversations about it. <laughs> yes. Um, in any case, he, he maintains that over his professional lifetime, he has heard something like 6,000 personal stories. Imagine. Um, I've never thought to count, but I don't think it's that many. Wow. Anyway, he found a strikingly common thread in the stories of the murderers. And that was that they had never been able to play as children. But if you think about the kind of families that somebody who's angry enough to commit a murder comes from, um, it's not a big leap to understand that they never got to play. Yeah. And if you uh, lived in a chaotic family where people got hurt and people were throwing things at each other or hitting each other and so forth and so on, you couldn't even play on your living room floor in peace if you even had a living room floor to play on. Okay? So I absolutely relate to what he's saying. Mm -hmm. um, he also did work with Jane Goodall. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's a famous zoologist who has done an enormous amount of work with primates. Sure. Okay? And she has also discovered that absolutely primates have a drive to play. Mm. Now, we are known as high-functioning primates. Mm -hmm. Okay? Most but, of us. Yes, most of us. Not all of us. <laughs> um, but she has found that it's, it's not just a human thing that animals play. And Dr. Stewart shows an amazing, amazing, I recommend the TED Talk, it's very interesting to listen to, but mm -hmm. he shows an amazing video in the beginning about two husky dogs mm -hmm. in Alaska who were tethered right around the shore of a lake or a river. And a polar bear figures out this situation and sees that there are two animals smaller than he is um, that can't get away and that he might have a very nice lunch lined up. Mm -hmm. So this 1,200-pound polar bear walks over to the dogs, 
And I guess there was a male and a female dog. And for whatever reason, the female dog did a play bow. If you've ever had a dog, you've seen them do that. They put their front paws down on the ground and look at you playfully. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's what the female husky did. Mm -hmm. And instead of eating them for lunch, the polar bear played with her for several minutes or an hour or some fairly reasonable length of time. Mm -hmm. um, so it was more important to play than to eat. And he was saying if you looked closely, it looked like they were just almost in an ecstatic state, having a great time. Yeah. All right. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat too. Anyway, he concluded, this Dr. Stewart did, mm -hmm. that play is an evolved behavior important for the well-being and survival of animals, especially those of higher intelligence, which is why I say that would be us. Some of us, anyway. <laughs> um, he, started to, he started an organization called the National Institute for Play, mm -hmm. and he hopes to expand the study of human play into a vital, vital science and help people everywhere enjoy and participate in play throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, he has, a ne he has a word that I've thought for, forever, but I didn't know the word. Neoteny, N-E-O-T-E-N-Y. Neoteny. Neoteny. And what, what neoteny means is that you have retained that child part of yourself that can have fun. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to people, you know, so-and-so over there, you know, I, I think has lost all capacity to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some people you just know when you meet them. That if somebody told them three really good knock-knock jokes, they wouldn't laugh. Um, or that you couldn't think of anything that would make them laugh. If, they're, if, so, if somebody in their family tickled them, would they laugh? Um, you know, there are some people you just can't imagine having any fun. Yeah. Okay? And it's a good thing to have neoteny. Yeah. Not monotony, but neoteny, mm -hmm. and they're very different <laughs> from each other. Okay? The retention of juvenile features well into adulthood. Okay. Neuroscientists and business people are also very interested in this because it's been connected that problem solving and play are connected. Interesting. Isn't it? That yeah. is really interesting. So if you play, you're using your imagination, you know, to arrange your little soldiers or your sure. little dollhouse or whatever else. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I thought it did too. And if business people are, are interested, it has to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, Writers and scientists, he notes, um, play with ideas every day. Mm -hmm. You know, will this work? Will that work? Is this true? Is that true? And that's, a, that's how children learn is exactly. through play. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Uh, anyway, play is something to do just because it's fun. There's no goal. You do it only because you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I think oftentimes we're, we grow up with a Puritan ethic that founded this, this country. And we feel almost guilty about enjoying things with real abandon. And when I say abandon, it means you forget all your obligations while you're doing it. Yeah. But it's important to renew ourselves. And I think it's important to say that if you, in order to play with somebody, you have to feel safe with them as yes, well. Yes, you do. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So if you're critical and you're criticizing your partner all the time, they're not going to be feel, feel safe to open up to you and play with right. you. Good point. Especially if you're a polar bear. Yeah. I really want to feel safe with you. And I was just going to say, part of the American heritage is the Puritan ethic, which means, you know, working is wonderful. We're all for it. Those people built this country and did a great job of it. Um, but they were suspicious of play and pleasure, and I think that has come down through our heritage. And if you'll notice, the Europeans do it a whole lot better and take like six weeks vacation per year. Do they? Yeah, they do. Interesting. Yeah. Um, now... As I was reading all of this, I came across a familiar name, and that's a psychiatrist named Lenore Tur, T-E-W-R, and she has been around forever also. She's a professor of psychiatry at the University of California, um, and says that play is a way to get control over the world. We get to manipulate symbols and control the outcome of events. Well, you f that's figure true. out who wins the battle with your soldiers, and. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be in what room in your dollhouse? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, she is very seriously a student of Freud's. Uh, but she's done him one better here. When Freud was asked what constitutes health in, a, in an adult, he responded, it's the ability to love and to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lenore has added to play, to Freud's to love and to work and to play. Interesting. Isn't it? Um, 
so she has great faith in in the the thing of play and of course it's kind of a joke that she did it to Freud mm -hmm. um, both children and adults who she works with trauma survivors which is why I knew her name mm -hmm. um, and she says she treats both children and adults with trauma history with play therapy because you can manipulate the outcome okay so you give more of a sense of control that's right a control of control exactly yeah yeah so I was just delighted to see her name in any context because her trauma stuff is brilliant but to see it around play I thought was just terrific so um, so what should we do about all this lighten up lighten up lighten up all right do something just for fun, long enough to forget about all your worries. Oh, it's so hard to do if you're going through a breakup, though. Of course it is. Of course, yes. And at many other times in life, too. Yeah. You can do anything on earth that seems to be fun for you. Mm. Okay, and I just made, made, made up a list of things. Some people have doll houses. Adults have doll houses, and it's considered perfectly appropriate. Mm. Um, I came to Disney one time when the teddy bear convention was happening. These were all collectors of teddy bears. Uh -huh. um, people collect all kinds of stuff, spoons, thimbles, um, old toys. People sew. They go cave diving. Never mm -hmm. sounded fun to me. Mm -hmm. They knit. They do cross stitch. Um, they play bridge, mahjong, pickleball. And some people collect Star Wars memorabilia, <laughs> I've heard. That's, right? that's just bizarre. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, whatever makes you happy, you can do. I know somebody who belongs to a sewing club. Yeah. Okay? And it can be social, or if you enjoy being solitary, you can do it yourself. There's some guy who made a, a Ferris wheel once out of toothpicks. Whatever makes you happy, whatever gives you that sense sure. of fun will work for you. Yeah, I did stand-up comedy for many, many yeah. years. Yeah, you still do some, don't you? Well, I haven't done it since... Uh, COVID, Oh, obviously. right, no, you couldn't. But yeah. before, yeah, I was doing it yeah. up until then, and yeah, I mean, 16, 17 years now, I, don't, I lost track. I did that, yeah. I did a radio show, yeah. that the key that we had so much fun was about bantering. Yeah. We did we did bantering all the time, we had comedians on there from around the country. Yeah. I mean, you could see a list of all the comics we had on my website, but just tons of comics that I truly loved would call up yeah. every week, and yeah. we could have a good time with them, you know? It's wonderful to make people laugh. Yeah. All right? So much fun. There's a very famous study started. There were two. I think there's one at Harvard, too. But there's a study coming out of Stanford University that's gone on since the 1920s. Wow. Okay? Where they followed people for all these years um, over entire lifespans. And in this group, those who were still surviving are those who have played the most throughout their lives. I might be eternal. <laughs> yes, you might be. Yes. Notes notes again, Dr. Turk. Okay? So it's important to play. And one of the things that you guys are going to love about the new coach is she is very funny. Yes, she is. She is very, very yes. funny. And we have a lot of uh, fun together. I'm sure you do, too. Oh, yes. Um, you'll see her soon. She's been training with us for a year now. But honestly, and maybe I, I haven't decided if I'm going to show this yet, but when I first started the channel, she actually recorded two practice videos before I ever launched the video publicly. And I still have them uploaded to YouTube. They're just private. Oh, cool. So maybe I'll think about releasing it. But yep. um, she's been in the background all these years doing things, helping me with the, the knowledge workbooks. And now with the next project that's coming out, it's going to be so much fun. And we, you saw how much fun oh, we had. Oh, yeah. We've had a great time doing this. With the, with the new project. Yep, we've had a great time. That's a lot. Of, that's actually a big way I was able to play during COVID. Yeah, right. Working on your project. Yeah. But you'll find there's a lot of play in this project. It's educational, but there's enough play in it to keep you kind of having a good time while you're at it. Oh yeah. I, I tried to make my next project a lot of fun, honestly, while, while being very um, therapeutic and yep. healing. Yep. The fun is therapeutic and healing. Yeah. In any case, are you ready for the formal, uh, the formal scientific uh, definition of play? It's an autonomous Intrinsically motivated activity. Does that sound like any fun to you? No. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. I would say we call it something you do spontaneously just for fun. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, 
And is is it good a good thing for couples to play? Of course, it's a wonderful thing for couples to do. Playing together in fun activities keeps you from ever getting bored. Boredom can cause terrible trouble in a relationship. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Monotony, oh, yeah. boredom. Oh, absolutely. My gosh, yeah. And it can tempt people to cheat and go find some excitement or fun somewhere else. We don't mm -hmm. want to do any of that. Of course not. Um, and you'll hear, I've, I hear people say often, um, you know, we've just grown apart. The rest of the sentence is when we stop laughing and having fun together. Yeah. I've always thought that was the end of that sentence. Yeah. Um, playing together helps you connect those good feelings to the relationship, and that's a great thing. And playing always makes people happier. And how can you go wrong with that? All right. There's a famous saying called laughter is the best medicine, but no one knows who said it. I looked it up. You know, the other thing that could be included with play is flirting. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And of course, if you want to look on the computer, there's all kinds of wonderful flirty play you can do with a partner. If you look up fun for couples, you will find all kinds of fun stuff to do. Yeah. The thing is, is that... In the beginning of the relationship, most people are playing and flirting and playing these little games of like, you know, yeah. being coy and then sure. take it a little bit okay. further. And so that's playful. And then you're with the partner for a while and that kind of goes away. Right. Exactly. And they're saying there's huge value in main trying to maintain that. Absolutely. Okay. So to end this presentation in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you some really awful groaner jokes. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, okay. Well, brace yourself. I All haven't right. seen these. No, he hasn't seen them. Why did Dracula lie in the wrong coffin? Why did Dracula lie in the wrong coffin? Why? He made a grave mistake. Isn't that a groaner? Jeez, oh, it's awful. Uh, I always I call these seventh, seventh grade jokes because when I taught the seventh grade, they all, always had to tell me the latest one before they could learn anything. Okay. okay. Where did the article on the famous owl research begin? Where did the article on the famous owl, owl research, research begin? begin? All right. In the who's who. Okay? That's just awful. <laughs> why didn't the dental hygienist like her award? Uh, why didn't the dental hygienist like her award? Okay, why? It was a plaque. <laughs> that All was right. painful. Now here's the, That was more painful than going to the dentist. <laughs> here is the final, the final one and my absolute favorite. Okay. Why did the dinosaur refuse to wear deodorant? Why did the dinosaur refuse to wear deodorant? Why? He didn't want to be extinct. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> so those are some terrible, terrible jokes that I wanted to share with you. Oh, I don't know if I should thank you for that, Mark. No, maybe not. Um, those are groaners. But did you all laugh? I bet you did, because I did when I first read them. All right. Let us know if you did. Uh, and, and let us know if Craig is to never let me do that again. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll want to. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for that research Welcome. margaret of course if you want to get our help personally just go to my website askcraig.net sign up for the coaching option that works best for you i do email coaching and i do skype margaret of course is available for skype coaching and stand-up comedy appearances if you if you feel that i can be helpful to you or tell you an awful knock knock joke please sign up with me yeah you click on margaret <laughs> top of the website to book one of those. <laughs> but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.